To determine the level of antimicrobial activity, we need to have a range of uh, tests that can be used uh, or applied on a number of pathogens as well as on a number of antimicrobial agents. Uh, one of those tests is this diffusion test. Uh, this is a commonly used test to check the um, activity of antibiotics against different types of bacteria. And so it's usually considered a standard test. And um, in this, um, even side by side, you can check the activity of a number of antibiotic agents against a particular pathogen. So in this particular um, section, we'll talk about the principle um, that is behind the disk diffusion test. Uh, we'll also talk about what zone width is and what's the Kirby Bayer method. So uh, as the name suggests, this diffusion test is basically a simple test in which you use disks that are loaded with antibiotic or any antimicrobial agent and you use those disks or you um, put those disks on um, agar um, agar plates and uh, you see the area around the disc in which there no microbial growth can be seen. So that's the simplest uh, principle behind the uh, disc diffusion um, test. So uh, usually this diffusion test is used for rapidly growing microbes because um, uh, this just shows how effective their activity is and how resistant or how susceptible they can be for a particular type of antibiotic. So um, it is commonly used for the gram-positive Staphylococcus and the gram-negative Pseudomonas. Um, um, the principle behind this diffusion test is basically what you do is you take antibiotic-infused paper discs that are placed on the agar which is inoculated with the test bacterium. So as I mentioned earlier, you need to um, select a colony against which you need to check the activity of the antibiotic. Um, what we usually do is we grow that colony on an agar uh, plate, which means that the culture plate already contains um, the bacterial colony that is to be checked. After that, you need, uh, we need to select the antibiotic that is to be tested. Um, this is pretty. Uh, this is uh, pretty important because whenever we are talking about an antibiotic, you know how there are certain organisms that can be um, only very minimally susceptible to it, which means that a high amount of that antibiotic can kill or stop the growth of that organism or that pathogen, but um, uh, in low concentrations, the organism is entirely resistant to the antibiotic. So it is important to select the antibiotic which you think might be effective to the pathogen and the pathogen is not resistant to it. So uh, we take the antibiotics and we infuse uh, paper discs with them, which means that we just put um, different concentrations on antibi of antibiotics on paper discs. So the paper discs are loaded with the antibiotic that is to be tested. Um, then uh, you put the antibiotic discs onto the um, agar plates on which the bacteria is being grown. As you can see in the figure before growth, you see there are three antibiotic discs that are loaded on agar medium. Uh, that is spread on petri dish. Then you uh, so then you let it grow, let the bacteria grow, and you see that there are different zones around each agar, uh, uh, each disc or each paper disc, which means that these are the zones in which there no bacterial growth can be seen. As you see around disc A. Uh, bacteria has been easily growing and there is no clear zone that can be seen which means that the pathogen is resistant to um, the uh, antibiotic which was loaded on disc A. If you compare disc B and C you see that there is a clear zone around both but the clear zone around C is uh, wider as compared to the clear uh, zone around B. 
This just shows the activity of antimicrobial agent and how strong the antimicrobial agent is and how susceptible the pathogen is against the antimicrobial agent. So you see that the um, antibiotic which was loaded on disk C is stronger and the pathogen is more susceptible to it as compared to the um, antibiotic that's loaded on um, disk B. Uh, the antibiotic actually diffuses very regularly and radially around um, uh, around the disc outward towards the egg. So there is a maximum concentration on the disc and as you move outward from the disc the concentration increase, uh, decreases and so beyond a point the antibiotic is so diluted that bacteria can grow. So you see that the diffusion, uh, that the amount of uh, um, diffusion diffused or diluted um, antimicrobial agent uh, that's loaded on disk B and C, you can see that the C is stronger because even in uh, a quite diluted form, it is uh, killing the bacteria and not letting the bacteria grow in that zone as compared to B. So the antibiotic concentration gradient is produced this way because it seeps uh, through and diffuses onto the agar. Then the antibiotic present near disk is obviously high concentration as compared to the um, antibiotic that's uh, away from the disk. It affects minimally uh, susceptible uh, microorganisms and the resistant organisms would, will grow up to the disk. So as you can see um, here, no, uh, no activity of antimicrobial agent can be seen around disk A, which means that organisms are freely growing as compared to disk C and B, in which uh, in B, there is a, uh, an activity that can be seen, but in diffused uh, or diluted form, this uh, uh, antimicrobial agent or antibiotic is not as effective as it is in case of um, antimicrobial agent on disk C. So this just shows the antimicrobial disc, the growth zone, the zone of inhibition and where no growth can be seen. So by this way, you are actually testing a number of antimicrobial agents onto a single agar plate and you are checking their effectiveness and their activity against a single pathogen. So this is important for um, pathogens that grow rapidly because oh, the pathogens that usually grow rapidly are usually uh, or usually can become uh, more resistant to antibiotic agents that are commonly used against them as well. So you need to keep on identifying the antimicrobial agents that are perfect to stop the growth of such uh, rapidly growing uh, microbes. And for them, uh, for such microbes, this test is the standard test and um, thus it's carried out uh, more commonly as opposed to other tests. All right, so the zone width is basically the, uh, the area or the clear zone around the disk. The distance from disk increases uh, uh, and the concentration of uh, antibiotic decreases. So it means that the antibiotic is at maximum concentration around this area and at minimum concentration around this area, right? So this basically is a clear zone or ring that is formed around the antibiotic disc after incubation. The wider the zone, the more uh, microbes are susceptible to this particular type of bacteria, uh, this type of antibiotics. So zone width is a function of antibiotic initial concentration, solubility, diffusion rate through agar, and so that is why there is no use uh, of this particular test in comparison uh, of effectiveness of antibiotics because there are certain antibiotics that can be easily um, um, diluted or that can easily diffuse through the agar as compared to other. So whenever we are talking about antibiotics, we are not uh, concerned with comparison of different antibiotics with each other. Rather, we are focusing more on the activity of antibiotic um, against a particular pathogen. Uh, so the zone width is the function of the antibiotics activity against the pathogen and not um, uh, 
and it's not used to compare the effectiveness of two uh, antibiotics against the pathogen. You just see um, how much a pathogen is susceptible to it. So that's more important and uh, uh, that is what we uh, learn from the uh, zone width of uh, a disk diffusion test. So uh, this diffusion test, which is the most commonly used test, uh, was developed in early 1960s uh, by two scientists, William Kirby and A.W. Boyer. Uh, both the scientists actually developed the uh, disk diffusion um, by initially growing fresh bacteria. Then they inoculate the surface by uh, surface of uh, Muller Hinton agar plate. Then they dry the plate for about five minutes and then appropriate uh, antibiotic tests are placed on it. So what you do is you take an agar plate, um, uh, which in this case is Muller Hinton, but there are other agars that are commonly used in, um, in different uh, setups um, that can be ideal for growth of pathogens. So you take a freshly grown culture of bacteria, you spread or inoculate the surface of the agar plate, then you dry it for five minutes, then you put the appropriate antibiotics, and then you see the clear zone against antibiotics. So as you can see in the figure that I've given here, the zone against tetracycline, for example, if you compare the zone against tetracycline and bacitracin, you see that the pathogen is completely resistant to bacitracin and there is no clear zone as opposed to um, tetracycline or gentamicin, etc. So this just shows the uh, effectiveness of an antimicrobial agent and the activity of antimicrobial agent against a certain pathogen. So you, you can, you know, see if a pathogen is um, resistant to it or susceptible to it. Um, in this case, you can also compare the zone width. For example, if you see the zone width of ampicillin, you see that it is very um, uh, narrow as compared to the zone width of uh, the trimethoprim or tetracycline or streptomycin. Their zone width is more as compared to ampicillin. So usually for such pathogens, tetracycline will be a more ideal choice or trimethoprim will be a more ideal choice as compared to um, ampicillin to stop the growth of such microbes. So once you let the um, inoculum dry on the agar plate and you put the um, discs onto it, you incubate it for 16 to 18 hours uh, at 35 degrees and then the diameter of the inhibition zone is measured near uh, to the nearest uh, millimeter. So again, the results are then interpreted using table relating zone diameter with the degree of microbial resistance. The plot of MIC versus the zone inhibition diameter uh, of each antibiotic is then put and the plot actually help us understand as you can see here there is a minimum inhibitory concentration um, on the uh, uh, y-axis and the inhibition zone diameter on the x-axis and once you plot the graph you can see how much of the bacteria was resistant or how much of the pathogen was resistant how much was sensitive and you see that um, center point uh, after which the bacteria starts uh, becoming more resistant. So the plots are basically used to find zone diameters that correspond to the drug concentration. If zone diameter for lowest level is smaller than seen uh, with the test pathogen, then it means that the MIC is very low and pathogen is destroyed by the drug. And if the MIC value is high, then it means that there is a small zone diameter. It means the pathogens are resistant to drugs at concentration that are achievable in the body. So you need to keep on comparing the MIC and you need to keep on uh, checking. If the MIC is low, it means that the uh, pathogen can be easily destroyed without um, having to add too much concentration of antibiotic because you know that once we keep on adding more and more concentration of antibiotic, it becomes a lethal dose for the host cell. 
So you need to identify that area that can be that can have an ideal um, range without the drug uh, being uh, toxic to the host cell. So if you have a small zone diameter, it means that the drug the the pathogens are more resistant to the drugs and um, they won't be killed at the concentrations that are not toxic for the host. So you need to find that zone in which the susceptibility lies and you need to find uh, the antimicrobial agent uh, whose MIC is pretty low. So in this particular section, we covered another type of test that is probably one of the most commonly used tests to check the uh, effectiveness of an antimicrobial agent. Uh, this test is particularly used whenever we are talking about uh, antibiotics and pathogens resistance or susceptibility to the antibiotic. So that's all we'll be covering in this section. Thank you for watching Scardia.com.